Hello everyone, Giltar here with a, not a vlog or anything, but just, I guess, a video uh, where I'm going to ramble on for probably 10 minutes or, or a little longer. Uh, I'm recording this um, just after dawn, Tuesday morning, January 25th, 2011. And today's a good day for me because even though I do work, it's basically a day full of meetings. So I'm not really working, and plus I get to go into work a little later than usual. Normally, I would go to work basically before dawn um, because of commute time and because of just I need to be there uh, because of my particular position in the company. I got to be there um, at the first of the, the work day. So, um, yeah, today's a good day for me. I get to spend some time before work enjoying uh, some YouTube videos. I need to catch up on, on a lot of videos posted by the people I subscribe to. And uh, I'd like to also make a video like this because uh, I'm, I'm not able to do a review today or maybe anytime relatively soon. So I'd like to keep my channel um, active and going with, uh, you know, um, periodic videos like this. So I'm just going to, you know, again, spend probably over 10 minutes rambling on some thoughts of mine. Uh, so let's get started. First of all, KPHM42, uh, you know, a good buddy of mine here at YouTube. Uh, recently put up a review of Gundam 00 Awakening of the Trailblazer uh, and you know shared some of uh, his thoughts on the movie and the TV series seasons 1 and 2. I uh, mentioned some really interesting parallels between um, the TV show and the movie to some existing fiction so I urge you guys to check out his video also check out his blog where he puts on uh, puts up rather um, a more extensive review of the movie. He also speaks about um, science fiction briefly on how it's a great um, sort of genre uh, for speculative fiction, for uh, for basically getting people to think while being entertained. I totally agree with them. Um, personally, I think science fiction is a wonderful um, canvas for social commentary. It's a great way to introduce um, discussion on various topics um, through the sort of um, veneer of a science fiction setting. But, you know, you're, you're discussing a lot of relevant issues um, that are, you know, relevant today, relevant in the past, could be relevant in the future as well. Um, so, yeah, science fiction is a great, great tool for thought-provoking um, content, whether you're being entertained or not. Um, I think science fiction is a really powerful tool. Uh, and it is too bad, I agree with Kenny, it is too bad that often science fiction is reduced to sort of mindless eye candy, which is great, but when, when that's all it amounts to, uh, in my opinion, it's no longer science fiction. It's just uh, a demonstration of technical prowess when it comes to special effects um, or, you know, basically, you know, providing eye candy, essentially. So, uh, yeah, check out KPHM42's review there, check out his channel some great videos that he's uh, put up in the past and will continue to put up in the future. Um, I also want to share my thoughts on my current sort of perspective on model kits. In the past, I've I've been critical on some model kits in my reviews for perhaps, um, at the time, my perspective on um, construction design that was lacking, so sort of fragile or flimsy construction. And I, 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 nor I believe I normally sort of set up the premise by saying, you know, these are snap assembly model kits and I think they should have better sort of stability. But at the same time, as I think more and more about model kits in general, I really do think in some ways I've been spoiled by snap assembly model kits, uh, particularly Gundam or Gunpla model kits. <coughs> Excuse me. Excuse me. Um, uh, by Bandai's Gundam model kits. Because they're so sort of user-friendly, they're so approachable by anybody, you don't need uh, sort of adhesive or glue to complete the assembly. Um, I often forget that model kits, really model kits, are meant to have be extensively worked upon. They're meant to be have the parts, you know, cleaned up, uh, the parts uh, primed and sanded down and painted and have extra modifications put on them and then glued together um, before you know basically you're finished and then at the end you have this really beautiful product this this handwork that you've done that is um, unique to you you know no two people will necessarily make the same resulting model kit and that's sort of the beauty of model kits is it's something that you invest time care and effort into 
And so these days, I'm not so hard up, I guess, on model kits that are less than solid when they're fully, you know, assembled, or that maybe need some parts glued. Um, if I were to redo some of my uh, model kit reviews I did in the past there, I would probably be much more lenient when I consider that perspective. Um, something else I've been thinking about recently is just the current state of toys, of action figures. Whether we're speaking of, like, sort of the, the uh, Western type toys, like... G.I. Joe figures or whatever, or the Eastern type, you know, the high-end Japanese um, action figures uh, and, and so on. Um, I'm really just really pleased by the developments that we've been seeing over the last year in 2010 and what we're seeing in 2011 and what we'll continue to see in this year as well. I think there are many great advances. I mean, to start off, um, I would say I'm mostly impressed by um, Transformers action figures, Transformers toys by Hasbro and, and Takara Tomy because with the um, Generations line which is one of the most recently um, offered lines of Transformers toys um, we have some really amazing level of design in terms of articulation design and transformation design and also sculpting design as well and the Generations line for example they're, they're only deluxe class size Transformers so we're talking uh, relatively small figures like uh, dark mount here, which is only maybe about five inches long at the most in vehicle mode and about the same height in robot or humanoid form. But uh, just like the transformation design, to get it from this vehicle form into robot form is, is not like sort of the good old days of Transformers where you're just unfolding a few parts and you have this blocky um, structure that resembles a humanoid. Uh, these days we have highly, highly posable action figures that have complex involved transformation design which are not necessarily complicated but they're very um, full of you know they're full of innovations um, I don't have the figure yet but generation scourge for example is is something that I've seen transformed and it has an a really really um, really great level of transformation design it's a small figure but it has so many different moving parts on the go when you're transforming it uh, but a lot of it seems um, intuitive and and not you know needlessly complicated it does the job but you know it, it's it's something that i think could offer satisfaction for for people who like um complexity in their toys who like to transform things um that's an example of some really great um toy design and that's something that would have been unheard of you know even last year i mean that kind of design transformation design in such a small toy um, it's something that's quite ambitious, and I'm, I'm very, very impressed that it's so successful. Uh, now, in terms of articulation, um, a lot of things are coming out, like Generation 2 Optimus Prime, or what's basically, I think, uh, Laser Optimus Prime um, in Generations coming up. That looks like a toy that has a really impressive level of articulation, and I can't wait to um, be able to examine it for myself uh, hands-on. And things like just the ability for Transformer toys to hold... Uh, weapons with two hands at the same time that's something that's unheard of as far as I know in Transformers toys until generations there might have been an example of uh, a Transformers toy that could do that in the past but I think it would have been something that was pretty lackluster and just the fact that it could hold two th or a weapon in two hands was something that um, is, is by no means something that could compare to the, the current level of articulation in toys today um, another thing I want to talk about is just uh, just something really sort of off in a tangent, off topic itself from toys and model kits and whatever, is just the, the the notion or concept of time. Because we humans, the notion of time is something that we are inherently connected to. I mean, our physiology is is based upon the, the, the passage of time. We our, our bodies work on cycles. We need a certain amount of rest or sleep. Um, our, our growth is is a measurement of time as an example of the passage of time uh and on a more sort of um everyday conscious level we schedule things you know we work around a timetable i spoke earlier today or rather uh, in this video about getting up before dawn about how my my day today is full of meetings and even even the concept of saying the word day that is a representation of a measurement of time and i think that's very interesting because uh, over the past several months, pretty much half a year or so, um, personally, I've been involved with time. Um, 
management management of time at work, uh, the concept you know, of of scheduling my my life differently because of my new responsibilities at work. Um, the, even the passage of time, the subjective passage of time, it seems like the, the days, weeks, the months have been passing by very fast compared to before I had my current position at my workplace. Um, so I, I just, this this thing that we call time, I think everybody sort of, because we're so familiar with it, because it's so integrated into our everyday lives, it's something that we take for granted. It's something that we don't consciously consider or think about. Uh, but I think it's a very, a very powerful thing in that it seems to be something unique to us humans in that we have to have this notion of time in order to um, exist as we do. You know, we, we create culture, we create history, we um, just by the way our civilization, the actual fact that we have civilizations uh, is because of time, because we can, uh, we can recognize this thing called time. Uh, we we leave records of our past. We consider our future. Um, not only can we remember what has happened before, but we can speculate. We can think about what could have been, what could have happened. And we can also think about what could be in the future. We can exist in both the present, the past, and in the hypothetical past or future. I mean, this is really, really... Um, for me, really interesting because it's just something that we don't see in other organisms in the world or it's something that we cannot recognize in other organisms. I mean, what other um, beings on this planet of ours create such long-lasting records? I mean, buildings, objects, um, tools, anything to be left behind. Um, other animals don't do that. And I find that's really interesting that it seems to be something that's unique to us humans. And this is not to say that we humans are better or worse than anything else. It's just simply to say that this is something that marks us differently. This is something that marks us as unique in this world, which I think is a great thing. And um, rather than seeing it as something that can divide us uh, from other organisms on this planet, I think it's just something that we can recognize that, you know, again, makes us unique, makes us a part of this planet because, you know, the, so many different organisms on this world um, serve different functions, different purposes, they do their own thing. And I think for humans, what we do is we serve as sort of, as this thing in what some would call nature. Um, I think more than anything else, we are kind of like keepers of time. This is something that is unique to us. You know, time is the providence of humanity. And um, yeah, I just, I think that's just such a, such an interesting and, and honestly a wonderful thing. Um, that we can conceive of this concept, that we can uh, consider this, and, and that we can, again, live in, in a way, we can live in, in different time periods. We are like time travelers, that past, present, and future, uh, what could be, what may not be, um, if these things, in an instant, we can conceive of, and consider, and sort of process in our minds. Um, I think that's, again, just a, a really great thing. So, I guess that's enough for today. I hope you guys got something out of this sort of rambling video of mine. As usual, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.